All right. So today's episode is really fun. I have been wanting to get more in-person interviews for you guys. I personally think they are way more engaging and fun to watch. And also I want to, um, with select guests, I want to give you a view into what they're doing, what it actually looks like, because as I have visited some of their clinics and offices or facilities, I'm always blown away by what's there. And I just don't feel like you really get that just hearing them talk about it on an interview. So Man, Dr. John Lawrence, uh, (laughs) meeting Dr. Lawrence is an experience and a half. He is such a forward thinking, cutting edge health professional. And I had actually heard about him through several um, colleagues, friends, and some of the things that he was doing. I was personally particularly interested in his work on high dose melatonin because it was something that I myself have been looking into and I'm interested in. So we're going to talk about that on the episode and so much more. So let me give you um, the bio, okay, the the, the deets on Dr. Laurent. So he is a chiropractic neurologist and naturopath who's been in private practice for 25 years. He works at Advanced Rejuvenation. It's a multidisciplinary clinic with a focus on alternative and regenerative medicine, naturopathic medicine, chiropractic functional neurology, functional cranial release, uh, Lumomed, Lyme disease, mold illness, and other uh, neurological conditions. Um, he travels internationally teaching other doctors. And some of the things that I experienced from, I'm going to call him Dr. John. That's what I like to do with my, my doctors. It's a little more friendly. So one of the things I experienced from Dr. John was um, uh, intranasal balloons. Oh my gosh. <laughs> if you haven't done this before, it's it, you, they stick balloons into your nasal cavity and then expand them. And I've actually been breathing so much better since he did that. That was really cool. Um, you're going to see, um, if you did, if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen some of this already, but we did, um, ozone and IV and also some other wonderful nutrients in the IV Myers cocktail and a high dose magnesium. Um, he also, um, is going to show you as we do a little walkthrough through his office, um, something called a stem wave that we did on my knee. That's been giving me issues. And also, um, Dr. John has a book coming out called Melatonin Miracle Molecule. So we'll put a link to that in the show notes. Check that out. It's super, super interesting work on melatonin. Fascinating. Um, he has many supplements. I told him he can never create a boring supplement because all of his supplements are so interesting and cool. Um, and you can find those all at mitozen.com. It's M-I-T-O-Z-E-N.com. A lot of his supplements are suppositories. We talk about that. Yeah, I know that's a little uncomfortable thought for a lot of people, but it's seriously no big deal. And it's amazing for absorption and slow release. So he's got things like the high dose melatonin, glutathione, um, some things to help with workout recovery, creating mTOR, which helps you build muscle. He's got um, a, a methylene blue suppository actually, which is super cool. So check those out. We'll put the link in the show notes there too. But we're going to start this episode out. Please watch this on YouTube. So you can see if you're listening on audio, you'll be fine, but, um, it's cool to see. And last thing, is after the walkthrough through the clinic, we actually did the rest of the interview on his boat out. He's in Sarasota, Florida. So that was really fun and unique. I've never done a podcast interview on a boat before. So it was, it was, it was a really good time. And I think you guys will get a dive into who Dr. Laurence is. And, um, I think you'll learn a lot. So we'll go ahead and dive in. Here is Dr. John Laurence. All right. I am here in Sarasota, Florida at Advanced Rejuvenation interviewing Dr. John Laurence. I'm trying to get some more in-person interviews for you guys so you can get a a look inside of these practitioners, doctors, experts, clinics, facilities, and get a little better feel for what they do. So I asked Dr. Laurence if he would take you guys through a little walk, a little tour of the facility. And so that's what we're going to do. He's actually going to be moving facilities soon, but at least you guys will get to see some of the treatments that he does, um, some of the offerings that he has here in um, Advanced Rejuvenation. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, so (laughs) this is, uh, we've got somebody doing red light in there. Um, but maybe you can, you can kind of peek. We're in the process of moving to a much bigger location, so forgive our clutter. But this is called a CVAC, um, or we also call it the pod, and you sit in this and the pressure changes. And when the pressure is changing, it, it's actually activating a lot of awesome genes that lead to mitochondrial biogenesis, um, stem cell activation. You get um, um, movement of lymphatics and also glymphatic in the brain. But we've seen some really good results with this, with, uh, you know, quadriplegics to MS to just basically activating the healing with patients with um, after 
using stem cell or PRP treatment. Um, but also, we use it a lot with, you know, like with Tara, what we did is after we did the IV with her, we put her in this pod. And so when you're moving lymphatics, you know, always think about, you know, either the swamp or river, right? So tissues in your body, organs, um, systems are either getting good circulation, they have a good flow, which is the body bringing in the nutrients and taking out the garbage. You know, you have your detox through your lymphatics. And this machine does a really good job with that. So we utilize that after IVs quite a bit. You following me? <laughs> Who are you? So this is um, our hallway. And this is great. This is, I walk, I probably walk like a million miles a day, just up and down this hallway, back and forth, back and forth. Wear out a lot of shoes, you know? This is kind of how I roll. Um, this is where we do a lot of our Regen Medicine treatments. We were early adopters in Regen Medicine. We probably did our first Prolo case probably 26, 27 years ago, um, which is with dextrose, you know, and then we kind of started using something called ozone, you know, where we're doing specific injections for ligaments and cartilage and tendons and spine and so forth to heal them up. Um, and then we, well, I think about 15 years ago, we started using adipose and bone marrow. And, you know, a lot of people watching this might be familiar with the, the uprise and a lot of the different technologies revolving, you know, non-surgical options for people. Uh, it's a big part of our practice. So we, you know, I would say anybody looking to do this type of medicine, you definitely want to find someone that was proficient using an ultrasound, you know, and so these ultrasound machines can pick up a lot more detail than even an MRI can pick up. So being able to diagnose exactly where the problem is, you know, whether it's a tear, it's a cartilage defect or what, whatnot, um, a nerve damage, you know, you can actually see the nerve swollen with these machines. Um, but then you can guide the treatments, you know, and we are able to not only inject a lot of these things into joints and into the epidural space, um, we can do injections literally like um, hydrodissecting certain fascial planes, you know, um, planes between where tendons and ligaments and muscles, you know, kind of are supposedly glide past each other. That gets a lot of adhesions, especially with a lot of athletes, you know, or people with trauma. And so we're able to go in and actually hydro dissect, which is basically even just injecting saline. Um, a colleague of mine, Matt Cook, out in uh, the East Coast, also does a technique where we we add peptides, you know, and different types of um, um, you know exciting you know uh, substances that actually uh, trigger the healing, as well as kind of removing some of those adhesions. And then you can even go into nerves and hydro dissect nerves. And so we do that a lot with carpal tunnel. Um, we've been able to get, you know, lots and lots of people to avoid carpal tunnel syndrome. We basically just go in and we just inject right around that nerve so that it basically just removes the adhesions around that nerve. So it's really exciting. And then the patients can actually watch it themselves. You know, this was a patient that had a lot of damage in their lateral uh, meniscus on their left knee. And so Tara sat and watched that, that um, as well, you know, going kind of going through the different areas of the knee and like what we found and then kind of game planning, like what we were going to use to heal that up. And then of course, you know, you have the, you still filming? No? Okay. So then you, then you have the, you know, optimizing patients through nutrition and lifestyle diet, and then the different um, applications to everything from chiropractic to acupuncture, to massage, to stretching, to the right types of rehab, which Sarah's, I mean, I'm sorry, Tara's a, a black belt with so I'm sure that a lot of people watching this are already kind of really on that level but you can't really compensate um, with strength conditioning with these types of injuries because what happens is that as we go through life there there's areas of our body that don't have a lot of blood supply right ligaments tendons cartilage they're dense and so the body has a hard time bringing in the groceries and taking out the garbage and those those tissues so they get injured and there's this repetitive stress and strain on them that cause them to start to fragment, kind of like an old piece of clothing. You know, like, I mean, I don't know if you have clothes from like years and years ago, but it's actually the fabric starts to wear out and fall apart. And this is what happens to your tissues. Now, your gums, very highly vascularized in, in, in general, muscles are. So there's certain, there's a lot of areas in your body that don't wear out because they have a lot of vascularization. So whenever you have a trauma or an injury, the body just goes in there and it can heal it. 
Um, but the areas that get us in trouble are the ones that are, have poor blood supply. So these treatments basically work by um, um, basically bringing in those nutrients that the body through circulation would want to be putting in there, scaffolding material, growth factors, stem cells, uh, and things like that. So, What's that picture behind you? Um, this is a painting I did. And this is, these are red blood cells. And then all this spaghetti-like material is fibrin. And these little uh, purple dots are platelets. So platelets are really that small. You know, people think platelets, oh, they help with clotting. Um, and they do because they release thrombin. And when thrombin interacts with collagen, you get like this, this whole thing turns solid, right? So you get an injury and platelets come in and they're activated. They open up and they actually spill a lot of growth factors. And that's how they really lead to a lot of healing. And those growth factors then call in stem cells to the injured area that then start to like lodge into this area and then start to multiply and differentiate into various types of cells. But now we're, we're understanding that there's another layer to this whole healing uh, cascade, which is the stem cells migrate, they stick to the area, and then they start to butt off billions of exosomes. And the exosomes shower the existing tissues to put them into a youthful growth phase. So you kind of have a combination of both, where the stem cells will literally start to turn into different cell lines and, uh, and different types of lineages of cells and you know, basically heal a lot of the different types of uh, tissues in the area. But then you also have this exosome effect, which is also a big, you know, primary reason and way that our bodies heal. Very cool. And the gecko? Uh, yeah. Well, we used to be gecko joint and spine, <laughs> okay. right? The gecko loses its tail. <laughs> yeah. But after years of, like, having to explain that to people, um, <laughs> I chose to change the name of the clinic to Advanced Rejuvenation. So that kind of dates. This is back in 2013. So <laughs> a while ago. All right. Um, yeah, yeah. Are you filming? Yeah, I'm just that role. Oh, okay. So, so this is where we do um, ketamine uh, journeys for people. And so, you know, my, my whole idea when I work with patients is, you know, this idea that, you know, there's the physical, you know, you have the vitality of the body, you know, you can deal with nutrition and, um, you know, lifestyle and supplements and, you know, there's a lot of things that go into that. Um, we talked about how you can work yourself with yourself structurally, right? So there's the kind of the, the structural component, um, which is also physical, but then you start getting into this spiritual, um, you know, mental, emotional aspect of health, which is actually a big part of um, what creates a true healthy individual. So, um, you know, I've had some just amazing benefits using uh, psychedelic, you know, experiences, working through my own subconscious, you know, um, programming, you know, and uh, some of these medicines, you know, right now what we have available is ketamine, but there's other psychedelics that are kind of in the pipeline like psilocybin and MDMA. But for right now, we're able to use ketamine and basically a uh, patient goes into a zero gravity chair and they go into what's called a journey that lasts for 45 minutes to an hour. They listen to certain music. Um, and either myself or one of my nurses or practitioners are kind of here to hold space and coach them into different breath work. And it, it's really uh, amazing how a lot of things come up for people that they um, either able to work through. And um, yeah, I mean, we have some more information on our website if you want to take a look at that. And. Uh, Okay, so this is our IV suite, and um, Dr. Tom here is running a protocol where uh, we initially, it's similar to what we did with you, except um, we got a little fancier with Dr. Tom. Um, we ran um, an, effu an infusion of the magnesium, which we already kind of talked about earlier, on how that alkalizes the system and vaso, you know, microcirculation, vasodilates to kind of get the nutrients a little deeper in the tissues. But with, with him, we're also running light into his vessel. So this is what we call um, Lumistem. And so it's intravenous light therapy um, right on the blood. And so we use a variety of different types of um, spectrums of light, inf interferential, I'm sorry, infrared, um, ultraviolet, uh, red light, you know, in the form of about 660 nanometers, um, blue light, yellow light. Um, so these are used um, in conjunction with certain nutrients that are considered photodynamic. Uh, and so 
these different substances actually can become um, photo activated by light. Like for instance, one of the most exciting things that we're doing here is using methylene blue. And it's a, it's a very brilliant blue salt. And so it's run intravenously along with the red light, which is at 660 nanometers. And so we're seeing some um, just really exciting results with viral infections and um, you know, chronic Lyme disease, you know, chronic Epstein-Barr. Um, also the major virus, we don't, we're actually, <laughs> we're so censored, we don't even wanna say it anymore, but I've seen some people make some massive turnarounds in just a couple of days with, with this protocol. And so um, generally what we'll do after uh, patients do these IVs is we'll put them in that pod that we talked about to the really push this deeper into the tissues. And it's really fantastic. So this, this goes by a couple of names, um, Stemwave, um, TRT, which stands for Tissue Regeneration Technology, and also Softwave. Um, but it confuses a lot of people because it does have several names, but we call it the Stemwave. And basically, it's a lithotripsy machine. And so lithotripsy is what they use in the hospitals to break up um, kidney stones. And so this is a, a very small kind of portable version of lithotripsy. And so the Germans basically put this machine together and discovered that it has tremendous benefits to our tissues and our cells. And so we'll use this for everything from um, neuropathies, you know, any type of painful nerve um, conditions to just arthritis of the joints, um, sports injuries. Um, we're able to use it over organs. Um, we can use it over areas of the jaw to um, address, you know, pockets of infection. I mean, it's just, unbelievable. Uh, we treat the hands and the feet. I've treated some patients with um, stroke where we just treat the hands and the feet and the body just on that side and I've seen some people just start moving their joints just because of the way it activates the nervous system. Um, also what's nice about this machine is it penetrates, you know, you can see, see how it light. It penetrates like up to eight inches into the body and there's very few uh, modalities or treatments that go that deep. I mean, we can inject that deep, but this is literally like a non-injectable, completely, um, you know, uh, non-invasive uh, machine that we can go deep into hips and, and lower spines down to nerve roots. And uh, I, I haven't seen anything make this powerful of an impact on chronic pain situations as, as this machine. And we combine this with the injections for an even more robust healing effect. So really anybody that might have, um, you know, have tried regenerative medicine, you know, some of the things I would, I would, I would say is one, how, um, you know, how long has that person been doing it, you know, because it may not have been injected into the right place, um, you know, what they're using, you know, they may think it's like, you know, the best, but sometimes the substance itself wasn't processed properly. Um, that can be another reason for, for, for something not to work. And then lastly, maybe it doesn't have enough support for you to actually garner a strong healing effect. So here in Sarasota, it's, you know, we have a lot of old people, you know, it's just, that's Sarasota, you know. So most of my patients are elderly and I love them, um, but they do need a little extra support. And so that, that's what this machine gives me. All right, and so this is my functional neurology, functional cranial release um, room. And Years and years ago, I started to play around with combining something called endonasal balloon inflation. So it's a form of cranial adjusting where you actually put a small balloon in through the nose. And I know Tara is going to probably be speaking to this because we did this on her, but we didn't film it. Um, but um, it, what happens is we get adhesions to deep connective tissue layers around the brain and the spinal cord. And what these balloons do is they, they actually restore this more wider open um, you know, kind of attribute that the skull normally enjoys, you know, without a lot of the stresses and the poor diets that we grow up with. If anybody really wants to take a deep dive into this, they can look at the Weston Price, who is considered the father of the raw food movement and the, the Price Pottinger, you know, group out there in California. And they, they've gone all over the world and they found that, you know, there's this shrinking skull phenomenon. And so, the functional cranialist really works on improving the flow of cerebral spinal fluid, the vestibular system, the ocular system. And so um, when I started to really deep dive um, and become a chiropractic neurologist and start using 
very specific exercises and different you know mod modalities and manipulations to help restore function in the brain, um, I started to find that there was a profound improvement when I would start doing these um, balloon treatments in conjunction with these, you know, what's considered functional chiropractic neurology. And so really in essence, what this, this is, is called functional cranial release. And I teach doctors to do this procedure. And this is the room I do it in. So probably my first and only podcast interview on a boat. Thank you for this experience. Where are we right now? Somewhere in the We're, Yeah, this is Lido Key, and Siesta Key is down this way, and we have Longboat Key that you can kind of see behind us, you know, right out here. Yeah, so uh, Dr. John was like, why don't we just do go, take you out on the boat tomorrow and do the podcast interview out there? I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. This is so gorgeous. So yeah, it's beautiful day for it. Yeah, yeah so, so Dr. John's based in Sarasota, Florida. So you guys saw some of the office area and some of the practices you do in your clinic. But what I want to do for the rest of the interview is you've got Mitos in. You've got this supplement line that is like knocking the socks off of everyone in the health field that I know that's tried it already. And so I wanted to dive into some of that with you today and some of the things that people might be able to look out for. I already got some Instagram messages yesterday. People were like, where is he based? Where can, and they're like, ah, oh, Florida, uh. But I'm like, okay. Now, truth be told, a lot of people do fly in to see you. You're very good at what you do, but they can still participate and still partake of some of the things that you have to offer through your supplements. So let's just start off with, uh, I guess, what is the basis behind MyDozen? Why do you call it MyDozen? And then let's go into some of the products that are more popular from that. Well, um, you know, I, I, I got really sick. You know, I was um, practicing, you know, chiropractic neurology and naturopathy and you know, I had a practice where we had, you know, not really to the extent of, that we have today where a lot of people flying in, but we had some. And, you know, it's like when you get yourself in that position, you kind of feel like you need to have answers to everything, right? And yeah. so when you find yourself, you know, personally in a, in a situation where you have a health condition and you can't fix it, it's, it's like doubly, you know, mm -hmm. disturbing, right? Because you, now you've got this health issue and then on top of it, you know, it's a bit of a hit to your ego that right. you can't even fix yourself, right? right? So how are you supposed to help other people, right? Yeah. So you almost have to kind of keep that buried and secret, you know, you don't yeah. want to, you certainly don't want it to get out to, um, you know, a potential new patient base. But um, it got so bad, Tara, to the point where, you know, I couldn't even really walk, you know, it was, you know, I was still in my, in my, you know, my late 30s. and. Um, um, it was just terrible. The amount of inflammation was just outrageous. And I just could not figure out, you know, what it was, no less find a solution that really gave me any more than just a few hours of relief. Um, and yeah, go ahead. I'll pause it and just say like, there's two things that come to mind. One is I do feel like most of the like master healers that I've met in the industry, it, it seems like they're put through these experiences for a reason, right? And also, I, I love that you share that because there's so many people that have health issues like this that no one can get to the bottom of. It's so frustrating. And I think it's kind of nice for them to hear that even all the education you have, been practicing almost 30 years, like you have so many resources and you are still struggling to find answers to that thing. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's kind of comforting to know it's like, hey, if you're in that boat, like you're not alone. And sometimes these things are extremely complex. So yeah, sure. I appreciate you sharing that and, and, and going through it too, because it, it does, it's, it's, it's kind of a gift to the rest of us when the people who are deeply entrenched in healing go through their own personal experiences because it causes you to learn so much. Mm -hmm. So yeah, well, that's, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> you know, my, my close friend, actually our, our close friend, Dan Pompa, um, uh, he has a term that he calls pain to purpose, you know, yeah. and, you know, and, and individuals like myself, and I'm sure like we could kind of turn the camera. To, it's like you, we all have these pain to purpose stories, yeah. right? And it's the challenges in life that make us stronger, right? It's like strong wind makes for strong timber, you know? So if we don't have, you know, gravity's a stressor, right? Without that, yeah. you know, there, it's a problem. So um, when things are easy and, you know, you're in a bubble, you know, it, there's not the catalyst for us to really have those signaling. Um, you know, it's like we talk about hormesis and right. um, different uh, stressors that actually make us stronger in the right certain dosage, right? Right. So for me, you know, probably one of the biggest defining, you know, challenges in my life was Lyme and also mold illness. And it just brought me to the point where I, I thought I was going to die. 
and I thought my life was over, my career was over. I didn't think I would get back to doing a lot of physical activity, you know. And I mean, you know, I I grew up in Hawaii, and I'd always, um, you know, I grew up surfing giant waves. You know, I was uh, out there, you know, uh, kite surfing and and windsurfing, and you know, I did a lot of bodybuilding, you know, back then, and so I was like just like this very fit individual able to do all these extreme sports and I just had endless amounts of energy and um, and it all came to a screeching halt you know and it, it, like I said it got so bad that you know I was pretty much disabled and I had to close my practice and um, pretty much lost all of my money you know it was like a perfect storm because it was like right around 08 you know I was already getting sick and then 08 hit I had this big building and I had a plastic surgeon, an orthopedic surgeon, renting space on the top floor, and they moved out. We couldn't rent it out, and so I had this big mortgage payment, and um, I had a few other properties, and I just I couldn't keep up with it, and I just had to walk away from everything, and literally um, lost everything, you know. And I was still sick, right? right. So it was in, through that process of of just literally burnt everything burnt down, right? And I love. You know, another mutual friend of ours, Patrick Bentempo, which we were over at his house recently um, uh, having some lunch, you know, and, and he was, you know, talking about how you just burn it down, right? Yeah. And and he likes to, to tell those stories about, like, there's this restaurant in New York, it was like they won the, it being like, the they, I think there's one or two restaurants that can get like the five star, yeah. like, restaurant. Uh -huh. And I'm forgetting um, the name of this particular restaurant, but they won it. And they literally, the next year, they burned the entire restaurant down and they melted all the pans down and all wow. the counters and they made a step, which was the front, the first step of this restaurant. And they reinvented themselves. And wow. everybody was like, what are you doing? Like, you're like, you made it. Like what, you know, and they, so he just burn it down wow. and start over and like reinvent yourself. And he wound up becoming a five star the very next year as well. Wow. So, you know, that, that type of risk, you know, and, and uh, it can pay off. And it's similar to your story because you, you did. You had to burn that down and you've now rebuilt quite a bit. I mean, just even yesterday at your clinic, I mean, the, the type of people that you're serving, they're flying from all over to be served by you. And it's, it's cool to see how you've shifted because not only, yes, you're still practicing, but you've really shifted, I feel like, more into the naturopathic end of things, like the the very cutting edge end of regenerative wellness. Mm -hmm. And not to mention your supplements. I, I was telling him yesterday, I'm like, you can't ever have a boring supplement. You realize that, right? Like, I would be very disappointed if I saw some boring standard supplement yeah. coming out of you because that's honestly how we even met was I had heard about your supplements from multiple people and I was like, this stuff is cool. What's this guy do? Who is this Dr. John Laurence? And then we mm -hmm. met at a conference through our friend Ben Asadi. Um, and so, yeah, like as you've rebuilt, you know, you've got that next step. Like, how has that your pain the purpose story? Like, how has that um, interlaced or inspired some of the things that you're doing now? Well, for sure, having that level of um, illness was a, a strong motivation to try to figure out, you know, how to fix it, right? right. And then paying very close attention to, you know, the things that helped and the things that didn't help right. so much, right? Right. I mean, I went to Germany. I spent five weeks in Germany. Wow. And it was to me it almost feels like a bit of a waste but huh. one thing that did come of that trip is while i was out there i was posting on facebook and one of my patients um it's like oh my gosh you're close to baden baden because it's like in southern germany right and um and she had treated with me for an inner ear condition it's called meniere's okay. and it, it's a basic it's usually an infection and people have um, tinnitus, they have hearing loss, and they'll usually have a lot of balance issues. Okay. And so it, very, very little available, if not anything available in allopathic medicine for these people, and they really mm -hmm. suffer. And this has been a, a niche for me for a long time, and I've had great success with it, except the tinnitus and the hearing have been not as well as I'd like, but the, the dizziness part, like mm -hmm. that's really in my wheelhouse right okay. and even back in the day like that was a lot of what I was treating where people were flying in for mm. but she said you got to see this doctor in Germany because he's doing this laser treatment called Lumamed right mm. and so remember that we, we showed you some of the lasers I, I don't think we went into the rooms because uh, they were being occupied when we did our when I, we did our little walkthrough but um, this was a, a treatment that we wound up um, becoming the only 
um, clinic that offers it, and we still are uh, with this this inner ear laser. So that came even the fact that I you know it, like I could have wasted yeah. five weeks over there basically doing treatment that didn't work, but then you know it turned out to be you know it was an exposure with Dr. Wow. Um, Kaiser out there, and we brought that technology here to the U.S. Yeah, so it allowed you to help more people in a very unexpected way that had nothing to do with your uh -huh. <laughs> actual pain, but your pain brought you to that point, and yeah, it's. It's, it's, I'm fascinated by this, actually. I'm fascinated by, it's like the universe sees that there's somebody capable and willing, and then it's like, okay, put, put it in their hands, they'll do it. They'll, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like, you see this happen so much. These things just drop into people's paths who are here doing the work mm -hmm. and ready and prepared and like willing to implement these things. So that's, that's really cool. Um, yeah. what, what else, you know, have you discovered along your path that's right? You know, I'm kind of curious where, why, why MitoZen? And can you tell them what MitoZen is? Can you yeah. tell them about your supplements a little bit? Yeah. Well, you know, we started out with, um, uh, glutathione suppositories, you know, and this was like when I was, when I was really sick, it was one of the only things that really, I mean, I would wake up the next morning and actually be like, you know, I feel like I'm a little bit less inflamed. And, um, and so, um, I, 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 I was really surprised that there really wasn't a lot of that available like on online and you got it This is a long time ago. This is like when the internet was just getting started, you know, and people were just starting to sell oh, wow. things online and so um, so I started to um, um, uh, Create some products kind of revolved around that and mm -hmm. we, we started making some nasal sprays um, that were based on glutathione mm -hmm. and some formulas that could be nebulized and then um, I started to get into some antimicrobial products based on a need where I was doing some medical uh, 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 medical crew for Tony Robbins, and they had a event in um, in uh, Fort Lauderdale, and so um, there was a, a flu going around, and it was nasty where people were down and out mm. terribly for a couple of weeks, mm. and I caught this literally like the day before I was supposed to drive out to <laughs> to like crew for Tony Robbins, Aww. right, for medical crew. And so I basically started throwing stuff together and I created um, uh, Glutostat, which is that antimicrobial nasal spray I shared yeah. with you yeah. a few days ago, right? And, and that's just been something that, especially like what's going on today, like we had um, Ben Greenfield actually got exposed to it. And we had been friends before that, but he, he noticed the potential for that for, you know, nasal and sinus health and yeah. um, started to kind of talk about his personal experience with it. And that... That's, I think, what really got MitoZen to start really um, becoming a lot more noticed. Mm. But before that, um, we were called Glutagenesis, you know, glu I'm sorry, Glutagenics. Mm. And so Glutagenics was, um, was, was the company. And so we also um, started to branch out and make some more kind of niche suppositories, you know. So for me, just a plain glutathione suppository wasn't really, you know, cutting it because I was starting to learn a lot about biotoxin illness and mold illness and Lyme disease. And I was starting to realize that, you know, there's some formulas and some formulations that could really move the needle quite a, a lot more than just a plain glutathione. Yeah. But I couldn't really find um, any, anybody that would, was making these, you know, easily. So we had to kind of like um, create that niche ourselves. Mm. And so that's where Advanced Biome Corp was born, mm. you know. And so then we're, we kind of have like the glutagenic site, we have the advanced BioncorP site. And so I had to like put everything together and that's when we started to kind of look at, you know, well, what are we really focused on here? Which is, you know, in my opinion, so often a lot of natural healthcare practitioners, um, which are just as guilty as like allopathic medicine as focusing on more symptoms or what I call downstream, you know, uh, events. And, um, what I was looking to do is to go as far upstream as I yeah. can to address a lot of these core disease issues. And what I found is it's a, it's a, it's an energy deficiency, you know, it's mitochondria, right? Yeah. So, um, things that can go in and have a positive impact to basically charge up the cellular batteries, um, could have, cause the body is self healing. It's right. self regulating. Right. I mean, there's a wisdom in right. our body that's way smarter than we are. Totally. Right. Yeah. So we're just going to throw like, this vitamin or that vitamin. It's like, okay, you have, you know, this symptom, we're going to give you like this, even if it's a natural herb for inflammation, right? Mm -hmm. There's a reason the body's trying to self-regulate, right? Yeah. And I believe that all diseases have the core of either there's 
inflammation, I'm sorry, they're, they're all related to inflammation, but there's infection or toxicity that are usually the cause of that inflammation, okay? And then what happens is that inflammation is going to cause a cascade of cytokines, which are gonna be unique to that type of inflammation. And those cytokines are gonna affect the cellular energy production in a way that it could cut it down to almost like 10% of what it would normally make, right? And this is what happens in cancer cells. They call it the Warburg effect. And you know, so this is what got me really interested in the deep inner workings of the mitochondria and like what really allows a cell to have resilience and strength and vitality. And what I found was one particular nutrient. And if you stay with us, we're gonna reveal that at the end. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but so I wrote a book on it, right? Yeah. And so I'll let you. Yeah, and this is, this is really what led me to you. Um, I was talking to a mu another mutual friend, um, Paul Austin, who I know you were on the Third Wave podcast. Um, and, you know, I had been personally interested, and I, I think we can say, I, I think you're talking about melatonin, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay, now you don't have okay. to, now you can go. You, you, you got everything you need. I personally, just from, um, you know, my supplement provider that I get for my clients, um, they send out awesome information, and they had sent this um, research out about high-dose melatonin, and it was just at the perfect time for me in my life. My mom had just had a major stroke. She has Alzheimer's, you know, the dementia, like, uh, symptoms have been happening over many years now and it was I was reading about how it's neuroprotective and can help um, enhance the neurological connection in the brain prevent Alzheimer's anti-inflammatory like all these things and I was like this is super interesting so I just independently based off of that started doing what I thought was high dose melatonin until I met John <laughs> mm -hmm. I, was, I think I said on a podcast like three or four years ago that I was doing 20 milligrams of melatonin which ever I literally had a couple of colleagues message me after me like Tara I don't think you should be telling people that you're doing 20 milligrams of melatonin that's like irresponsible <laughs> and I was like I don't know man I, I read the research because I think it's actually really compelling and then Paul Austin from the third wave was <laughs> saying that he had recently gotten a, a melatonin suppository from you with 200 milligrams of melatonin and mm -hmm. also glutathione mixed in. And it just, I, because it's a personal interest, it really I, it stuck with me. I was like, what's this guy's name? You uh -huh. know? <laughs> so yeah. then anyway, we ended up meeting what, a few months later. And so, um, yeah, could you tell people, I mean, God, you, he's got a whole book about it. The me melatonin. Miracle molecule. Miracle molecule. Yes. Yeah. And so obviously, you know, but what are the cliff notes? Why might be pe white? Why might people be interested in melatonin as part of their life? Well, like imagine if you had a, you know, a train and it's burning coal, right? And that, that heat that comes from burning the coal is what drives the pistons to drive the train down the, the, the tracks. And so in your body, you're burning uh, fuel in the form of glucose and there's, get, there's, there's smoke that comes from that. Yeah. So it's oxidation and you have this... Right. Um, antioxidant buffering that needs to occur otherwise you know things don't you know things go south really quick right. so that natural um, uh, antioxidant in the actually inside the mitochondria is primarily melatonin hmm. and so when stress exceeds that cell's ability to deal with um, that oxidative level um, it starts to shift. It makes that shift that we talked about where it starts to produce a lot less energy. Yeah. And, um, and again, that's called the Warburg effect. This is what happens with cancer cells. This is what happens with COVID when people have the cytokine storm because imagine if you're fighting a battle and you've got all these soldiers, which are like your immune cells, and they're like fighting against a certain infection and they run out of gas. Like, let's say that there's not the reinforcements of like um, food and supplies that keep that army going then all of a sudden everything collapses, they lose the war. And that's exactly what happens with COVID with a cytokine storm. And that's actually why a lot of hospitals are giving patients sometimes hundreds of milligrams of melatonin, just like I, you know, I recommend with a lot of, you know, uh, you know based on the research, you know, there, it's pretty compelling. Is, is melatonin a precursor to glutathione? No. Or how, how do they interact? Well, they're both uh, high tier antioxidants, you know, CoQ10 is kind of up there as well, but glutathione is actually made by your liver. Okay. Yeah. I, is it, forgive me if my biochemistry is, you know, obviously not at the level yours is, but, um, I was under the impression that when we make ATP that yes, the free radicals or the oxidative, you know, stress happens and that our body then as a reaction to that creates glutathione endogenously to counteract that. Uh, so you're saying, but you're saying within the actual cell, so within that mitochondria itself, 
in order to offset that damage, we produce melatonin as the it's, it's produced inside, in, the mitochondria. inside the mitochondria. Interesting. I didn't know that. And and when this even it gets even more exciting because when the when the melatonin is there buffering the oxidation, like helping you deal yeah. with stress, right? I mean, if there's no stress, you don't need melatonin, yeah. right? Yeah. But um, when it's there, if it starts to lose that battle and you start to like. Um, shift that uh, that energy production to this primitive you know uh, it's called um, um, aerobic glycolysis um, when that happens if you give exogenous melatonin it actually reboots that whole system where you mm. start making more melatonin again mm. so uh, taking it exogenously has been shown to be not only safe but extremely effective in so many different diseases wow and it's in the literature like anybody that wants to just look at so the way we structured the book is we have chapters that are based on different diseases like or, or organ systems like the brain, the gut, the heart, um, the skin, um, the immune system. You know, we talk about autoimmune. We talk about autism and children with melatonin. We talk about cannabis and sleep. Yeah. We talk about um, degenerative neurologic conditions. We talk right. about psychological conditions. I mean, you just can go on and on and okay. cancer, liver. So you start to look at this book and it's almost like everything's in there. And it's like, right. how could something have such a profound impact on so many different things? And it's because, you, you know, increase the health of the mitochondria. Yeah. The body can heal itself. Yeah. And so that and that's what and that's why, you know, we start looking at like the emphasis that we have in our clinic and the emphasis that we have in a lot of our products is really addressing this core issue. Hmm. And it's it's basically, you know, allowing for more efficient uh, mitochondrial function and more resilience at a cellular level. Wow, that's so interesting because I think, you know, like word on the street, like probably just by like people who aren't even in the health field is like, oh, don't take don't take melatonin because then you won't make your own melatonin. You're saying the complete opposite. You're saying actually kickstart your body like saying, hey, make melatonin. Again. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, so there's no negative feedback loop like there right. are other hormones. So, uh -huh. you know, there's really I, there's nothing I can see in the literature that makes melatonin scare me at okay. all right yeah but you know a caveat is you know like any other you know change in your health you know program you should talk to a health care yeah. you know your health care provider and you know the problem is not many not, not many of them really understand melatonin right. you know so and it puts a lot of people in a bit of a pickle right so my suggestion you know you can go to melatoninbook.com and we'll do a coupon code for your oh, listeners you. And they can download the book and it's a PDF version. So there's about three or four chapters that won't be nice. in there until we release it on Amazon. Which but is in December 2021, correct? But it comes no, out on no, I'm hoping it's going to be um, sometime in March or, eight, March or April, April of next year. Okay. Yeah. okay. But anyway, you can get the three or four chapters through this link and kind of get some of that clarified. On, on Actually, the, the whole book, just it's minus oh. three or four chapters. Ah, okay, yeah. great. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. So we'll put the link for that in the show notes. Um, also, just real quickly, uh, oh, actually, no, wait, hold on to melatonin. There was something you said, I think it was the first time I had talked to you about um, how people, it acts on the same gene as like CYP1A2. So if you're a fast metabolizer of caffeine, it, melatonin goes through the same pathway. Is that correct? Can you share mm -hmm. on that? Yeah. So um, if, if somebody were to take melatonin and the next day they feel really groggy, yeah. um, it could be that there's still melatonin in their system, right? Yeah. And so just like, you know, with this gene pathway uh, doesn't allow you to break these things down as quickly. And right. so anybody that's sensitive to caffeine, that's a good window into that you might have this variant. Uh -huh. And so what we'll have people do is dose the melatonin much earlier, you know, sometimes even like before dinner or after dinner, yeah. you know, so a few hours before they go to sleep. And so that by that way, by the time they, they wake up the next right. day, it's kind of out of their system. So the reason that that works for most people is because if you have a light in your eyes, you're, you're not going to be releasing that melatonin, you know, into the brain. Um, so most most times people can can tolerate and handle uh, both um, in, endogenous and exogenous uh, melatonin, I'd say about 80 percent of the population can can tolerate that, which is a big deal because you know, some of the um, conditions that we're treating in the clinic uh, using high dose melatonin, we're wanting to dose them day and night, you mm -hmm. know, and I learned this from my one of my mentors, Dr. Frank Schallenberger. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, he we you know, we we both use this quite a bit with a lot of neurologic cases and a lot mm -hmm. of cancer patients. Yeah. 
he, he certainly treats a lot more cancer than I do. You know, we we don't really see a lot of it, but he, he it's pr the primary thing he treats. Wow, and he uses melatonin a lot in that treatment. On every case. Wow, yeah. wow, fascinating. You know, I think most people think of melatonin as just this <laughs> something moms give their <laughs> three-year-old or five-year-old who doesn't want to go to sleep in tiny doses. You know, it's 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 this uh, very untapped it seems like it has a lot of untapped potential in mm -hmm. terms of our health so i'm glad that you're bringing that to light well you know the other thing is you know you you mentioned that you'd heard some naysayers talking about it and dissuading you from melatonin i'm mm -hmm. sure you know there's probably a lot of people watching this or listening to this that might have had the same experience mm -hmm. and i think that there's a bit of a conspiracy against not only melatonin but a lot of kind of unpatentable natural remedies that yeah. are really just rock stars among like remedies right yeah and so if you look up melatonin in uh, you know if you google it like uh, webmd will reference you know that these are a list of side effects that you'll get with melatonin and i mean some of them sound terrible like headaches and depression and anxiety and blah 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 and what they don't tell you is that they're referencing a study and the, the side effects were the exact same thing in the placebo arm that they were on the arm with the people taking melatonin. Right. So it's a little bit misleading. Yeah, and I have noticed, just to kind of back up what you're saying, like, I'll have, I've done anywhere from like 20 to 100 milligrams of melatonin in my own experimentation, and I I still can fall asleep at night, like, without it. Like, sometimes I don't take it because I'm just like, why do I need to? I'm just tired, mm -hmm. you know? But on those days where I'm super stimulated and I've had too much caffeine and I had a really stressful night and it was like, you know, an event or something, and like, oh my gosh, it's so helpful. But I, mm -hmm. it's been nice to see that I don't always need it, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's been kind of cool to experience. Um, well, you know, think about our current situation right now and even just since the industrial revolution you know it's like there are so many stressors that we have that we haven't adapted for yeah and so right. when we look at melatonin as being like the ultimate stress adaptation molecule yeah great because point. think about it every stress is going to result in cytokines and the cascade it goes from cytokines and then it goes into stressing the cell Mm. and not allowing the cell to make the, as much energy as it needs to to yeah. buffer that stress yeah right so if you can solve that issue which is what melatonin does then you have resilience to like a variety of different stressors virtually all of them so interesting yeah and i, I it's funny you say that because i the day we're recording this is the day after my episode with Minnie Pell's um released yesterday and I, I listened to it this morning and we were talking about the exact same thing in terms of toxins and like even even the internet like we remember when there was no internet there was no internet when we were little you know it's like just that um and and it's the industrial revolution it hasn't even been 300 years so it's like the level the ra rapid evolution that is being demanded upon us with all of these new things it's like it, it's no wonder people are struggling so much in their health and mm. on top of just the regular stressors of being a human, of emotional stress or being fatigued or whatever, but there's just so much. And, on and then now. you've got somebody, something like melatonin, which right. you know has. We're gonna get some waves here, by the way. Okay. The boat just went we'll see by. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you know something that has such little, if any, like negative, you know, consequences of of taking. Um, like melatonin, you know, it, it's it's just it, it's really something that I feel compelled to get the word out on. And that's why I wrote a book, you know, and that's why I want to give it away yeah. basically to yeah. your audience is I yeah. just want to get this information out there. Yeah. So awesome. I can't wait to read it. I'm excited. Um, last thing, cause I think we might be running up on time. Um, I wanted you to talk about Zen spray. Okay. This, so here's the second point of comment. So I was hearing about this high dose melatonin. I'm like, who is this guy? And then I met, um, it was at the biohacking conference and <laughs> a bunch of people were passing around this, Hey Tara, I want to try this Zen spray. And, I, I personally use Hafe or Rafe, some people say it like uh, for meditation sometimes. And so they're like, it's kind of like that, but like not as bad because you really got to earn it with <laughs> Hafe. It, it burns. It's like a, um, something in the, like shamanic practices that I picked up when I went to do ayahuasca. And it's awesome little 20 minute kind of almost medicine experience or very, you know, it, you get to the levels of meditation that you hope to get to. Mm -hmm. But it's like kind of sucks. And so I tried the Zen spray and I was like, this stuff is awesome. And that's when Ben Asadi had some and he's like, no, he's here. The guy who made it here. I'm like, ah, oh. so anyway, yeah. I want you to talk about Zen spray because it's really cool. I really appreciate that product. Yeah. Well, I think you and I kind of we share um, a history where, you know, there's some plant medicine that helped us. Right. And For so sure. you have these subconscious um, 
you know, narratives running, you know, underneath that you're maybe not aware of, right? right. And so some of these medicines allow you to, um, to bring those forth and to deal with them and move yeah. on and yeah. they, so they don't control your life, right? Yeah. So nice. <laughs> yeah. um, and so, you know, I was exposed to Hape through some of those experiences and initially I really hated it. You know, right. like I, I had somebody, they blew it up my nose with the device, uh -huh. right? And it burns. Um, it, it was, yeah, I was like, well, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> it literally feels like your brain's on fire. The experience right. is nice, but you got to earn it. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I didn't even get to the point where I was like feeling good. Oh, I was like this. Heavy dose. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's exactly it. So like a few years later, um, I was um, I, I was talking to someone that facilitates medicine mm -hmm. and she was just going on and out about how she uses the hoppy in the morning yeah. with during her meditation, yeah. how helpful it is. So I'm like, you know, what, what am I missing? Like, yeah. I, I've got to like circle back. And so, so I, I, she gave me some and I started experimenting it with, with smaller amounts and I got it. Like I got that with the, called the afterglow, right? Yeah. So after yeah. you do it, there's this like calm centered, but you're alert. You know? Yeah, it, that's a great way to put it. If anybody's done plant medicines and you kind of know how you feel the day after, it kind of puts you in that space for about 20 or 30 minutes. Right. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. yeah. That's mm -hmm. a good point. So, um, so what I did is I started to kind of work around creating a nasal spray with it. And so we came up with a few, few formulas, a few variations. We have, you know, our um, regular, uh, which is kind of like a really pure, authentic hape um, extract. And then we have more of a essential oil version that also has some extract in it, but it's going to have like kind of a rosemary kind mm -hmm. of pepperminty uh, mm -hmm. vibe to it. Nice. And then we have a CBD version. Um, and yeah, it's been hugely, hugely possible, um, uh, hugely popular, yeah. but what, what the, the, the way that it works. And so I can kind of get into my kind of functional neurology hat and get yeah. into this, yeah. you know, some of the inner workings is that you have your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. And so, the, the parasympathetic nervous system is really um, run by the vagus nerve, right? And so this vagus nerve, when it's activated, gives you that feeling of like comfort and relaxation and oneness and connection. And, you know, you feel social, you know, and you're happy, right? And so we're not getting enough of that in our lives because we're adrenalized and we're constantly activating our sympathetic nervous system. So Zen um, activates the parasympathetic nervous system through the trigeminal nucleus, which is actually the innervation of the sinuses and the face. And so, and this is why we're actually um, about to launch um, Zenanga, which is like a, um, a Zen for the eyes, right? Yeah, which we tried. tried it. And then we have Boca really Zen cool. as well, which will be coming out sometime in the next month or so. Now can you see why I said you can never make a boring supplement ever. <laughs> <laughs> This is the kind of stuff he brings to market. It's really cool. Um, yeah, so, and, and I just have to say, like, even though I, I like my uppers, I like my coffee, I like being in that mode, I still really enjoy Zen Spray in the morning for my meditation. I feel like it puts me in this, it, it doesn't, like, bring me down. Sometimes I think people are afraid of parasympathetic. Like, parasympathetic doesn't make you tired and groggy. It makes you, like, it, for me, it feels centered, mm -hmm. balanced, like, yeah. connected, solid. So I really enjoy that experience for my meditation in the morning. So I highly recommend. You know, uh, hopefully we have time to do this, but I'd like to kind of circle full, full back a little bit to tie in melatonin and and, and talk a little bit about the sympathetic and parasympathetic yeah. nervous system. Yeah. So, um, you know, you you have this this aspect of your of your nervous system that is basically the autonomics, right? They're yeah. on autopilot. Yeah. You don't have to think about it. And it's this yin and yang type of thing, right? You have the fight or flight, and you have the resting and digesting. And so um, when you look at something like heart rate variability, which I would assume a lot of your listeners do, because you're like, right. a lot, there's a lot of fitness, you know, based biohackers, biohackers yeah. and so forth. Um, heart rate variability. So your heart is innervated by both sides of this autonomic nervous system. And so when the heart is beating, you'll have the sympathetic jump in a little bit, and then you'll have the parasympathetic jump in a little bit. And that's what causes the variations in the heartbeat. And so if you have low variations, then that means that there's not one, one of those sides of the nervous system, the autonomics, is more dominant than the other. Mm -hmm. So you might be having the sympathetics like control the heart 75% of the time, and the parasympathetic only controlling it 25% of the time. So you'll have a decrease in your heart rate variability, hmm. right? And so it's never a situation where we have too much parasympathetic. I mean, there's very, very few mm -hmm. situations. We are all 
adrenalized and we, you know, uh, you know, that's, that's the disease of modern civilization. So when you see heart rate variability going, um, going down as we get older, and like if you look at that, that graph, it's the exact same graph as melatonin. You see melatonin going down at the same ages, wow. it's almost parallel. Wow. And then you wanna start thinking about, so melatonin, because if you think about when you go to sleep, like this is when your body really goes into solid, deep parasympathetic rest, right? right? Rest and digest. You digest, you rest, your body regenerates itself. And the primary activator of the parasympathetic nervous system, the primary supporter of the parasympathetic nervous system is melatonin. And as melatonin starts to decline as we get older, or if we have a lot of what I call melatonin headwinds, which is light pollution, um, you know, um, e EMFs. Um, I mean, we get into a lot of this in the book, but there are a lot of things in our, in our culture that really suppress melatonin production. For sure. You know, I experienced this even, uh, my, so my daughter is just turned 16 and she's very, she's very intelligent and she's always researching things. And one of the things that she was just had this big thing about, <laughs> if she watches this, I'm, I'm throwing her, kind of throwing her under the bus here, but um, <laughs> she was like very adamant that kids are more not teenagers are more nocturnal by nature. It's been proven and like school should start later. And I get it. I get where she's coming from. I do think school should start later for teenagers, but she's like, I literally cannot fall asleep before 11 o'clock, blah, blah, blah. We go camping <laughs> and guess it was out by like maybe 930 at the latest because we're sitting around a fire. Nobody has phones. Right. We're mm -hmm. allowed to more gradually cre create that melatonin production. But think of the environmental difference between that sitting around a fire outside peaceful noises no music no stimulation just us talking how tired you get i'm sure everyone has experienced this you're like 10 o'clock you're like just tanking and then being inside and all the lights are on and music or the tv's playing and you got your phone and you, god you know and so yeah it's just I th when, when you describe that, I think of like our modern society, like just being, I, I like to be outdoors at night a lot. It's, I feel like we're missing half the show because we go in our little shelters and we miss this like amazing show. But every time I do, I'm like, wow, like I'm out there in peace and quiet and beauty. And I think, God, I could be inside right now with like a TV running or light. It's like, it's, it's, a, it's abrasive almost. It is. The, the thought of it. But we're in that, most people are in that every day, you know, so. Yeah being able to have some assistance, I think, <laughs> at least something to get us deeper into that parasympathetic state. It's a perfect helpful. storm. I mean, you think about like 5G and like what the impact that um, EMFs have on melatonin production. I mean, those, those, those frequencies go right through the skull and they basically trick your pineal into thinking it's still daytime. Right. So it suppresses melatonin. And then you have, you know, the optical um, suppression of melatonin with the lights and the light pollution. And then, you know, you want to have your room dark. A lot of people don't have adequate um, blocking of their windows and they may have some light pollution while they're sleeping. Um, or even yeah. just you showed me that you have one of those red lights that can also be blue. And it was evening when you showed it to me. And it was like, you were like, I do this in the morning. You're like, watch. And I, he's like, you know, I get a, a mood boost, an energy boost. And I felt that instantly right when you just uh -huh. straight blue light coming at me, even though it was 5 or 6 p.m. Yeah. Like I was like energized just from that little burst yeah. you know and we've got that all over the that's place that's a strong that light that yeah, night. yeah. <laughs> that's why i was like wait do it again <laughs> yeah but yeah maybe not in the evening so yeah it's um i appreciate you sharing this message because really i don't think i don't know anybody else who's really talking about melatonin at the level that you are so i appreciate you bringing that molecule to light and helping people start to think about that a little bit more not only supplementing it but also what am i doing in my daily life that's blocking me from being able to make my own mm -hmm. melatonin, so yeah well we dive into that in the book yeah. you know so anybody watching this that is getting excited about this topic i mean feel free to go and download the book and um you know like i said we're going to be releasing it on amazon and those last four chapters are actually really the chapter i wrote on pineal i actually start to dive really deeply into a lot of um, you know, subject matter that is, is really, um, really important to me right now. It's, you know, just raising my own level of consciousness, you know, and just diving into, you know, my own spiritual evolution and, mm -hmm. and, and starting to, you know, get clear as to like, you know, the meaning of life, yeah. you know? Well, this is a very safe audience for uh, that, or at least if they've been listening and they're still listening, we've had many spiritual uh, teachers on the show. So it's, it's, I think, um, that caters to the same things that we're interested in also mm -hmm. is, 
is, yeah, I want my health to be better, but, but like a lot of the purpose is like, um, I'd say kind of like merging almost with like our higher selves, you know, mm-hmm. like how do we live in that existence here mm-hmm. in this realm more? At least that's what I'm after, you know, is like, um, I think that we're here on earth with a forgetfulness for a reason, but like we get these little hints, you know, and my psychedelic experience have been that way. Meditation is that way for me. Just listening to my intuition Mm -hmm. and actually acting on it is like a medicine experience in and of itself. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you opening up on stuff like that in your book as well. Oh yeah, my so, pleasure. Yeah. My pleasure. Very cool. So okay. the, the next book's going to be called um, Into the Mystic and we're going to delve okay. a little bit more into all of that subject matter. Yay. Yeah. Yay. It's going to be good. <laughs> okay, so melatoninbook.com dot com. is where you guys can find the book. Um, for for supplements for and real quick suppositories just in case anybody's like did he just say suppository can you just explain basically why you choose suppositories as as the delivery system well so it's a rectal delivery yeah and so uh the suppository is kind of bullet shaped you know it's really easy to insert and so a lot of people initially might have like a little bit of a you know (laughs) trepidation with that (laughs) but you know the 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 upside most of the people that wind up using these products they're either desperate because they're really sick and they're like they could give you know, what, what route administration, right, like right. if it's going to work and they're going to be able to Thank get healthy, better. like I'm, right. I'm all about it. Yeah. Or you have biohackers that are willing to, you know, try yeah. things that are unusual and different. <laughs> um, but you know, in Europe, it's so commonplace. Like, Is I mean, it? it's like, you know, it's a lot of doctors use high. them and right. so the absorption is really high, yeah. right? So if you have a slow release over like several hours, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and so you have something called peak plasma that can last for anywhere from three to five hours. Mm-hmm with that versus like you you your cells only have like maybe like 30 to 30 minutes to an hour to absorb the nutrients that you might take with an oral supplement wow okay awesome thanks for sharing that and i I was laughing because i i have a um a friend from the gym who's a he does R and D on supplements. He's very in the supplement world. And I had one of your um, pre workout type uh, suppositories, and I I had an extra one. I was like, "How committed to you are your? How committed to your health are you?" He's like, "Pretty freaking committed." I was like, "You got." And he was like, "Wow, we're next level friends now. You just gave me a suppository." Oh, yeah. He was excited about it. Did he take it? I I don't know. I just gave it to him right before I left for this trip. So oh, okay. I'll find You'll out. follow up. Okay. That's funny. But anyway, okay, guys, we'll put the link to the book and the supplements. Is it Mitos and what's the website for supplements. Mitozen.com. So M I T O Z E N. Mitozen.com is all the supplements. And I was just telling John, I'm like, have you read your reviews on Zen Spray? I'm like, he's like, no, I mean, not in a minute. I'm like, oh my gosh, just raving, raving fans. Like, mm-hmm. so Thank it's you. pretty cool. So yeah, check out, I mean, you have so many things. NAD, uh, gosh, I don't know, you can list off a few of your. Uh, yeah, and we got popular. like great methylation yeah. uh, products. We got like the only NAD, uh, you know, which is, you know, going to be kind of on par with get going and getting an NAD IV. Super cool. Yeah. Um, we've got glutathione. We've got melatonin. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got some great anti-inflammatory and mm-hmm. like fasting support. You know, we didn't really get a chance to get into mm-hmm. our fast track fast protocol. Yeah. Uh, we The workout support is actually raising mTOR. So it kind of works on like you know, you have the opposite when you're fasting, where you're looking to increase autophagy and break yeah. down and recycle. So we have a, a product called Stemtor, which is really activating a lot of the um, the growth and repair. Nice. We've got a um, um, uh, probiotic, uh, you know, Probiomax, and we have one that supports. And we use it a lot in regenerative medicine, so it supports the survival of stem cells mm. called StemZen. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, cool stuff, huh? So, okay, so mitozen.com for supplements, um, melatoninbook.com for the book, and then um, any anywhere else you want to direct people? Well, the clinic is advancedrejuvenation.us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, great. And it's Sarasota, Florida, and comes with free boat tours. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> only, only, for, only for the podcast. Yeah, if you're lucky, you I'll bring you out on the boat, you know. <laughs> and hopefully you guys got to see his beautiful dog, Lonnie, and the, I tried to get her a Lonnie, little bit. Lonnie, come here. Come here. Tour. Come on. She's come up here. Heart. So maybe you saw her in the office tour a little bit. She's she's great. So anyway, hopefully you guys could hear this (laughs) (laughs) over the water and it was enjoyable for you guys. I'll link everything up in the show notes. And yeah, John, thanks again. Thanks, Tara.